You might have noticed that rabbits don't really make noise. So if you're trying to communicate with an animal that doesn't really communicate with its voice, then you probably shouldn't use your voice to communicate with it. Hello Buns and welcome back to Cinnabon Sundays, our weekly video series where we talk about all things bunny. My name is Morgan, I'm Cinnabon's Bun Mom, and today I am going to teach you how to communicate with your rabbit. Now if you have a pet rabbit or you love rabbits and just research and want to know as much about them as possible, you might have noticed that rabbits don't really make noise. They're very, very quiet little creatures and they don't really use their voice to communicate. The way that rabbits communicate is mainly with body language. Now I've talked a lot about rabbit body language on this channel and how to understand it to learn their language, but today I'm going to teach you how to respond and communicate back to them. So if you're trying to communicate with an animal that doesn't really communicate with its voice, then you probably shouldn't use your voice to communicate with it because that's just not their typical way of communicating. Now, yes, rabbits can learn words and can be trained to respond to words like a dog and cat will, but I have found, at least for myself with Cinnabon, that routine and body language has been the best way for me to communicate with Cinnabon and what she understands best. If you're trying to communicate your schedule with your rabbit, try forming a routine around what you're trying to communicate. I have talked so much on this channel about how rabbits are extremely routine oriented creatures. And once they get into a routine, they really don't want to break it and they begin to anticipate things matching up with that routine. For instance, if you feed them every day at the same time, they are going to expect food at that same time. But on a deeper level, if you start feeding your rabbit treats on your lap every day, then suddenly they're going to hop up on your lap all the time asking for treats. So if you really wanna start hanging out and playing with your rabbit at a certain time each day, do that every day. And they're gonna start anticipating that and wanting to hang out with you at that time. Or if there's a place that your rabbit needs to go every night before bed, like for Cinnabon, she goes into the Cinnabon room, offer your rabbit a treat in that space every night at the same time, and suddenly they are gonna know, oh, it's bedtime, gotta go to my room. If you're trying to communicate that you wanna hang out with your rabbit, get low, get down on their level. This is basic rabbit 101. You always wanna be at your rabbit's eye level because if you are towering over them, they view you as a predator. So a way to communicate that your rabbit that you want to hang out with them and you want to be their friend is to get down on their level. So not only is getting down on their level a good way to remove any threat level from yourself, it's a good way to communicate to your rabbit that you are ready to hang out with them because you are coming down to see them. Now what happens if you want to communicate that your rabbit is doing something bad? Now I have an entire video on my channel all about how to quote unquote punish your rabbit. But a main way that I communicate to Cinnabon when she's doing something bad is by lifting her up. Cinnabon does not like to be picked up. It is not fun for her. So anytime she does something naughty, I will quickly pick her up, tell her no, and put her back down. But on the flip side, if you're trying to communicate and reward good behavior, like let's say your rabbit sat through a really good grooming session, or you just got back from the vet, or they're just being extra great that day, treats are the number one way to communicate with your rabbit any form of treat, forage, roots, chew toys, berries, banana, whatever it is, your rabbit knows that if they're getting a treat, this is something good. So if you're definitely wanting to communicate anything good to your rabbit, treats are the way to do it. Now, if you're wanting to communicate love and affection to your rabbit, the best way to communicate that is by giving them head scratches. When rabbits are in love or best friends with other rabbits, they will groom one another. So if you want to groom your rabbit, I'm not talking about grooming with a brush and with clippers. I'm talking about the kind of loving, affectionate grooming they do. Rub on your rabbit's nose, rub on your rabbit's ears. This is just going to communicate that you love your rabbit so much and they are going to eat that up. Now lastly, if there are any other emotions that you're trying to communicate with your rabbit, it's just important for you to know that your rabbit is empathetic, so more often than not, they are able to understand the emotions that you are trying to communicate. If you're stressed about something, if you're really happy, or even if you're sad, they are so empathetic, they can feel your emotions. So if they see you crying, or if they can see that you're stressed, a lot of times your rabbit is gonna feed off that. So if you're not trying to communicate a stressful situation for your rabbit, don't come into the situation stressed out and high strung because it's only gonna stress them out more. 
But on the flip side, if you're having a really rough day, if you're crying, if you're sad, more likely than not, your rabbit is gonna pick up on that energy and wanna come check on you and see if you're okay. So while rabbits don't really use their vocal cords to communicate, they don't really use the language of words, they do use the language of empathy and body language. So I hope that this video was helpful for you, not only to understand what your rabbit is thinking, but for you to understand how you can communicate and tell your rabbit what you're thinking. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in our next one. Bye buns. Thank you.